All right, good to have you back. Uh, today we're taking a look at, uh, at a 2-5-1 progression and specifically uh, the 5 chord. And we're looking at the 5 chord for uh, color. How can we change the 5 chord, this specific 5 chord voicing, uh, to have more color, more interest, right? Uh, so let's let's first of all uh, uh, take a look at the progression, right? So two is nice. We're just going to use nice easy chords and five, one, and then turn around to, with that secondary dominant E seven leads back to the A minor. It just gives us yeah a little bit more movements, right? secondary dominance and then cadence point is uh, is the G major okay now as far as the chord is concerned um, you can look at it as as uh, as originating from the C chord you know in open position and then we add the seventh right and then we can just move that up two frets and that gives us our the chord that we're looking at today, that that D7. Okay, so let's do let's do an alteration of this chord. Uh, we're go, we're going to make it a nine, but before we make it a nine, we have to find out where we're getting that number from. Where we're getting the number from is the corresponding D mixolydian mode. This is just the way it works all the time. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And there's our, our mixolydian mode. We can count further too. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, right? So if we take the nine and then add it to the seven chord, we end up with a sound like this. Nice, you know, nice sound. A little bit more interesting than just the just the common seven, right? Uh, in this vo voicing of the seven, it, it has two roots. So we have a D down here, and we have a D up here. So we don't, you know, don't really need a, a redundant D for any good reason, right? So there's the D nine. You 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 can finger it either here like this with with this little half bar, or you can finger it with the three and four on top like that. Now, uh, in context with the 2-5, it's just, yeah. yeah, adds a little bit more interest. Since we're on the 9, uh, let's now lower the 9, which would give us a flat nine, right? And and that flat nine note is not diatonic. That means it doesn't come from the mixolydian mode. Uh, it's uh, it's an alteration, right? So uh, now we have a sound like this. That's definitely, you know, it's 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 it has a little bit more interest. You've got this movement here. Right. Okay, cool. And let's raise the nine. Nine, raise nine. Definitely, you know, a little bit more bite. Uh, let, now let's 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 do something a little a little different. We're going to take uh, we're going to take the um, the D seven, and we're going to move that uh, that root down to the flat seven. So we're going to have the flat seven in the lowest voice, the three here. The 13 here, or the 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then we're going to have the, uh, the root on top. And 
so in a two five. Very, very simple movement in this case. Now we can take that voicing and alter that from the 13 to uh, augment it, uh, the, the, uh, yeah, the flat seven down here, uh, then the, um, the three, and then the six, uh, which we've done, but rather than the six, we're going to use an augmented five instead. That's, that's, a, that's a lovely sound. Flat seven, three, augmented five, and root on top. Okay. I think you got it, right? Okay, naturally you can you can use those chords in combination as well. All right, you could you can you can do for instance, like there's there's many, many, many combinations. Okay, uh, and how about a 13 on top? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So here we've got I've taken the root out. Uh, we have the uh, we have the three, the flat seven, nine, and the thirteen up on top. And a really common uh, common uh, voicing, and because it's so so effective. You can tell that the two five one is starting to sound a little more, you know, like it has a little bit more harmonic depth and substance. Okay, so we've done uh, we've done the nine, we've done the thirteen, uh, raised nine, flat nine, uh, the other third, the alternate thirteen, and uh, oh, you know, this this is uh, this is also a nice one. It just came to my mind. This is a flat, uh, a flat nine, uh, thirteen with a flat nine. So flat, se uh, flat seven on the bottom, the three, giving us a tritone. Uh, then the uh, thirteen, and then the flat nine on top. Uh, and then, uh, just to close for this uh, for this little uh, section here, um, if I take the flat five, if I take the if I take the root on the bottom, and I can also put the five on the bottom, you know, yeah, right. So there's the five on the bottom. But if I lower that five on the bottom. Everything else on the chord stays the same, but with that lowered fifth on the bottom, actually what I end up with is an A flat seven with a flat five. And those chords are very closely related. And I'm gonna, you know, we'll, we'll do another, another session at a, at a later date discussing the uh, tritone substitutions of which this is one. And then these chords are very closely related. As you can see, here's my, here's the notes of the D seven chord. All I'm doing is just adding that A flat on the bottom. And so it's better to call that an A flat 7 flat 5 than it is to call it a D7 with a flat 5 because you don't really want to put a flat 5 in the lowest voice. So, uh, so A7 flat 5, which gives us movement like this. which is even, you know, more interesting. And of course, now you can use all of those voicings. You know, 
any, any one of them, and you can also move them up to the E7, right? The, that secondary dominant that we were that that's moving to the to the nine uh, use any of the same voicings up up here as well, right? So. You know, I think I think that'll give you some ideas of how to uh, take a simple chord uh, a chord voicing like like that D7 uh, with the uh, with the one three seven and and uh, a repeated one and uh, and start to think of respelling the chord so that all of these chords become just colors new colors for for exactly the same dominant position of that of that chord right these are just colors they're not uh, they're not substitutions of functions right they're they're just simple uh, simple colors some of them are a little brighter some of them are a little darker uh, but but the important thing is that you uh, that you put all of these voicings uh, together in in one heading under one heading which is the five chord or the dominant seventh chord okay uh like subscribe if this is of any value to you uh share uh the point of these videos is to learn right i'm here to teach uh and uh more on that later there's a big difference between teaching and entertainment uh at this stage i'm not here for entertainment I, 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 something I know how to do pretty well is teach since I've been doing it forever. Uh, okay, and um, good to have you back. Uh, we, we just traveled 4,500 kilometers uh, to this new location, and so it's been a little while since we've shot, and I think, I think this is, uh, you know, this, this might be a new start for us. Okay, uh, good to have you back. Subscribe. want to see you again. See you soon. Bye.